Nick Dumfries was a policeman who was part of the Cumbria Constabulary, where his wife Catherine also worked. In January of 2020, Nick was heading down the M6 in a BMW 330D responding to a 999 call. Given the nature of the call being a pretty serious assault with weapons involved, getting there quickly was of utmost importance. Nick brought the car up to a speed of roughly 130 miles an hour. As he accelerated, the BMW's engine effectively et itself just after he'd passed Junction 44. A faulty crankshaft bearing had broken loose, which punctured the oil sump. Nick's car spat most of its oil out onto the road, which is ultimately what caused his life to be tragically cut short. Nick lost traction from the oil going everywhere. The car swerved off the edge of the motorway, flipped over and caught on fire. A later inquest determined there was nothing he could have done to prevent this. Now, although initially it might not have seemed like Nick's unfortunate demise had anything else to it, an inquest was later opened after the event, which uncovered some less than favourable truths about the whole situation and potential oversight to the safety of police officers as a whole. This wasn't the first or last event like this to have occurred. In fact, the inquest had shown similar faults had been reported between five and seven times per month between 2014 and 17. These issues are specifically referring to BMW police cars with the N57 diesel engine. The N57 is fitted in a number of different BMW models the police commonly use here, mainly the 330D Touring, 530D Touring and X5. You might be wondering why it's almost only police cars which have encountered this pretty catastrophic issue and the reason for this is mainly down to how the cars are driven. BMW put out a statement following all of this coming to light saying this. This issue is associated with the particular way in which the police operate these high-performance vehicles. This unique usage profile puts extra strain on some components, and therefore BMW has specified a special servicing program for these vehicles. There is no need for action on any civilian vehicles. It seems that the nature of the usage they're talking about is idling for long periods of time, moving at a snail's pace, and then immediately thrashing the cars. Since a car could be taken from cold up to 100 miles an hour before idling for another hour and then immediately thrashed again right afterwards, it's not the easiest life that these cars go through. BMW engineers in Austria went about testing seven of these engines and discovered that the main culprit of these fires is down to poor lubrication caused by aging and degrading engine oil. There's a bit of confusion when you dive deeper into the police's routine issues with 3 litre diesel BMWs. Before the N57 came the M57. Both engines are 3 litre inline 6 diesels and the police have used cars fitted with both of these engines in the past. Depending on the reports you read, both the N57 and M57 are brought up as having fire issues. The BBC reports that the N57 had been failing 5-7 to seven times a month, whereas the Manchester Evening News say it's the M57. Interestingly, in early 2022, the police began winding down their use of the cars for higher speed use. Across the nation, police officers were told to keep it below 90 as an absolute maximum, regardless of circumstances. Not only that, but a number of specific forces withdrew the cars from use altogether, including Hertfordshire, Northumbria and Cumbria, the force Nick belonged to. Following on from the winding down of BMWs by the police, and presumably a lot of back and forth arguments behind closed doors, BMW announced it was no longer going to supply the police with cars earlier this year, which can ultimately be traced back to Officer Nick's unfortunate demise in 2020. So, with a whole load of M57 and N57 engine cars no longer of any use, what did the police decide to do with them? Well, just like many other ex-police vehicles, a lot of them ended up in police auctions, although with a bit of a twist. They've been drilling holes in the side of the engine blocks to effectively render the cars as useless. The main reason they justify doing this is public safety, since the cars are at a raised risk of catching fire. But 
Fundamentally, as long as the diesel particulate filter gets cleaned out fine and the car isn't used like a police car, this shouldn't be enough of an issue to just drill a hole in the side of the engine. What we're then left with is a huge waste of money and it certainly isn't good for taxpayers, policemen or the environment. But there we go, that's the quickest solution they could think of. If you want to learn more about that, I highly recommend you check out Jeff Buys Cars video on that which I'll link below this video. And there you have it, that's why British police cars keep, or kept, catching on fire. The diesel particulate filters were clogging up way quicker than they normally would, causing a DPF regen where the carbon is all burned out to happen a lot more frequently. Long story short, this fastened the rate of petrol getting mixed into the oil, which degraded the oil, causing damage, and eventually led to much more serious issues, including causing the car to catch on fire. Finally, I want to talk about rumours of what the police are replacing the fairly rapid M57 cars with. Personally, I've seen a few Peugeots driving around as well as some Range Rovers. That's Thames Valley Police, by the way. I have no doubt that quite a few officers won't be too happy about this, given the even more questionable reliability of some of these vehicles, not to mention how difficult it must be to catch anyone with more than 200 horsepower. If you work for the police by chance, I'd be really interested in hearing your thoughts on what these bimmers should be replaced with. I've heard rumours of a move to being more involved with the VW Audi group, but who knows? Please do leave a comment if you've got a better insight into this. And with that, thank you for watching. We're nearing 5,000 subscribers, and I can't thank you enough. I'm definitely looking into making a Discord server, but it's probably going to need a bit of moderation, which is why I haven't jumped into it just yet. It's definitely something I'm strongly considering, because I know we all love talking about cars and car history, so it would be great to have a place where we can all dive into that sort of stuff together.